Well, I, I, my, my view was not so much to try and deal with the specific questions that were asked. But to, what I really wanted to do was sort of put this whole discussion that we're having today in some kind of a context. There have been a lot of very specific questions and a lot of very specific uh, uh, notions put forth. But uh, I, I think you know, it's really important to see this in, in sort of a, a, a setting of time. And that's what I'd like to do today with your permission. Um, the, the internet has had a rather complex evolution over the past 30 some odd years since we first started it. Uh, Vint and I were uh, very fortunate to be there at a time when this was all virgin territory and we pretty much had free reign to go try what, what we wanted. Uh, it's hard to believe that we had so much free reign back then and, and if we can't solve the international problems I think if Vint and I uh, only had the ability to live forever, we'd probably volunteer to, uh, or maybe we shouldn't, uh, to jump back into that role again. But I think that's uh, not in the cards. Um, what we did do, though, was spend quite a bit of our time over the last 20 years systematically working to get government out of the business of running the internet. And to, to this point, there's very little that's left that has any direct government tie. It's mainly the private sector that is operating the internet today. Uh, I think uh, it's, if anything, surprising that it works as well as it does, given that there are so many contributors to this process from all over the globe. You might ask yourself, what example is there in history where you've had literally so many parties not directly collaborating with each other, but collaborating in a very broad context that's allowed a complex system like this to evolve over so many years, and hopefully it will in the future. There are so many issues that we need to deal with in the internet that I find it strange that we're having so much focus on ICANN. I understand why the focus is on ICANN, but I want to sort of give you a, a larger uh, view of things as I see it. One is how little time and energy we are spending on focusing on what's going on in our computers directly. Um, you know, I think that we all know that there's a lot of spam. We all know that there are viruses. We know of that lack of security. But wouldn't you all like to know what's going on within your machine a lot better? To have some, the same notion of what's going on in that environment that you have with regard to everything else in the world that you care about. Most of us are probably just unaware of a lot of the details that are going on in the machine, unless you have some kind of software that occasionally will block something in may not even tell you. There's been quite a bit of uh, work on developing something called the clean slate internet. And the arguments that are made for that have always seemed rather strange to me. That is, well, we've got too much spam, we need a whole new internet. We have too much virus, we need a whole new internet. If anything, the internet's been working too well. It's getting all this spam and viruses around. We don't need a brand new one. We need to figure out how to deal with those issues. And if we had a solution to those problems today, we could probably do a pretty good job of figuring out how to implement them on today's current internet. That doesn't mean we won't see architectural ideas in the future that need to be evolved. I certainly hope we will, but uh, uh, there are various ways that that can be explored. Now, the DNS happened to be one choice that was made uh, relative to the internet. The thing that's critical inside the internet itself are IP addresses. That's what allows packets to move around the internet from one place to another. The choice of the DNS, which we made back in the mid-1980s, was designed by some of the folks, John Postel, Paul Monte Petrus, and others, was to make it easier to deal with IP addresses. So you didn't have to remember numbers. You could deal with something that was more semantic. But, uh, you know, to me, when I, when I think about, you know, how many people think it's so intrinsic, it's only because we've now built that into applications. You can imagine other ways of dealing with the Internet today that don't require that at all, and yet we have this incredible focus on it. I, I hope ICANN continues to flourish uh, going forward, but not for the reason that so many people have, have expressed. Yes, it is critical to the management of the DNS and IP addresses. I'd like to see that continue. But the, re the reason I'd like to see it flourish is because it's one of many options that we have, not because it's the only one. The effort to try and bring it under the control of some 
organization, whether it's the UN or a multinational setting, has largely been because people think it's the only one. There is a, an organization called the International DOI Foundation. It's headquartered in Geneva in, in the US that deals with a very similar thing that ICANN does in, in the world of publishing and information access. It's got a registration system. If you look at it, carefully map it against ICANN, you'll see very many strong similarities. It's never come up here. And yet, if somebody were to say that the IDF should come under the UN, I would say, why that one? And, and why any particular one, especially if we have lots of alternatives in the future, which I hope we do. The handle system, which I've talked about much in some of these readings, uh, is such another alternative. And I think that, you know, even though I've been directly associated with that, my, my point in bringing it up is simply to point out there is another one powerful alternative that we might use. This is about managing information on the net, dealing with the objects directly rather than routing. It's been very widely used. Uh, there is something like 30 million objects that the International DOI Foundation currently deals with with that system, totally independent of the DNS, totally independent of ICANN. I hope we see many more things like that uh, evolve in the future. So I want to emphasize that, that, that the software application side of it is really where we need to put significant focus going forward to invent new capabilities, both in terms of how the functions work and what are the critical infrastructure requirements that they need, and that there are many, many more important issues to focus on, in my opinion, um, and that if these alternatives develop, as I surely hope and expect that they will, then time will show that we don't need to place our attention, or at least so much attention, on any single organization, whether it be ICANN or any other one. And the real future of the internet is in all the innovation, and that's where my hope is, that we, we let it flourish and we do it in a cooperative fashion that allows multi-stakeholder participation. The question early on was about the new leadership of ICANN. Is it going to be open to discussions? And, and yes, absolutely, here we are. Uh, the commitment remains the same to the white paper principles. We're looking at a industry-led, self-regulated, bottom-up, transparent process for the coordination of the internet resources. And that's going to continue uh, uh, under the new leadership, as you called it. Another comment uh, called about uh, calls for greater integration, and we heard about more convergence, and in particular uh, with the GAC and the ITU. Let me, let me say, first of all, yes, we are very keen on working more closely with the GAC, and we have had for some time a committee trying to strengthen the processes of the GAC within ICANN because of the commitment we have to the contribution governments can make to the ICANN process. Milton challenged the idea of, of whether government should be in the GAC uh, in ICANN at all. Uh, at the moment, that's a question for governments. All of ICANN's institutions are built from the bottom up, uh, and the governments have expressed an interest to take part in that fashion. If and when governments decide they no longer want to take part in the GAC, of course, that will be up to governments. But while they want to take part, the government advisory committee is the place for them, and we want to make that work. Convergence in relation to the ITU, yes, absolutely. We look forward to working very closely with the ITU and with all other institutions involved in this area. And, and while I'm talking about Milton, perhaps Milton, your other point I want to disagree with was the suggestion that there are that ICANN does not want to be talked about at the seminar. That there are people here who don't want to talk about this. We do, we're here, we've supported the creation of the IGF, we're participating in it, and we have no difficulty talking about what we do here or anywhere else. We look forward to this kind of debate. That's our commitment to the bottom-up principle. Uh, we need to hear from everybody. Uh, Raul, amongst some very many other things that you made, talked about the need for greater multilingualism. And, and I agree with that. And I'm delighted to report that at the last meeting 10 days, 10 days ago in Los Angeles, we had for the first time at an ICANN meeting, people standing up and being able to speak in their own languages. We had people speaking in Spanish, French, Chinese, and other languages. So there is also a commitment role to, to multilingualism at ICANN, and I hope that continues. Uh, 
Monsieur Alphonse, there were some very interesting proposals, and I'm not going to use your metaphor for fear that becomes embedded uh, in, the, in the discussion. Some very interesting suggestions about, about restructuring ICANN. Let me just remind everybody that under our bylaws, we have a very rigorous self-examination process. Every three years, every part of ICANN undergoes a serious review. Uh, that's our commitment to re-establishing ourselves, re-examining ourselves, rebuilding ourselves to respond to the processes. And I urge you, Mr. Alphonse, I know you're a regular contributor, and anyone else who wants to contribute to ICANN to take part in those processes for rebuilding.